Alright, this is a follow-up to my previous video where I basically showed how to create a bookings tracker using SharePoint and Power Automate uh, such that whenever a new booking is created in a particular calendar that a, a record of that is added to a list in SharePoint. And one of the columns, I made a little bit of a mistake there uh, because one of the columns that I used that I wanted to use in that list uh, with the intention of building additional flows to handle when a booking is updated or when a booking is canceled, uh, I use the ID column. So there's a simple a columns just identified as ID uh, for each booking that's created. So if I uh, jump over to my other user here and create a new booking, we'll see uh, what that ID is. Uh, refresh this to make sure that we're getting available times. So I'll say this is for the 19th at 9 a.m. <clears throat> and the user again is Andrew Carter. and book so if we jump over to our bookings tracker list here we'll see that that was created and that booking ID has this big ugly string in there it's a whole bunch of characters now if I want to edit this or, or let's say I update this maybe I chose the wrong time so I'm gonna reschedule that it was originally scheduled for 9 a.m. we'll reschedule for 10 a.m. and update that. Now I've created another flow, just sort of a stump of a flow that will run when a booking is updated. So let's see what happens when we bring that up. So that ran just a moment ago. So when I open that, now all this is is the trigger and then a compose action where I'm putting the body. So the data that's coming out of that trigger is going into this compose action. And if we look for that ID field, there it is. Now just for our own sanity, I'm going to take the ID from that list. So we'll copy that. I'm gonna bring that into a text editor here. And then we'll go to the ID that's in this uh, the response to when the appointment was updated and we'll put that in that same text editor and we'll see that they are not exactly the same so basically somewhere along the way here there is a different character uh, and it's sort of a not sure exactly where but eventually we will hit something that's different. The point is that this ID is not a unique identifier for that particular booking. Uh, it's almost like a transaction ID. I'm not entirely sure what its purpose is, but essentially this is not going to be useful for the purpose of going in and updating an item after it's been created. However, there is another value that is returned which is the you know, the self-service appointment ID. Now uh, if you are not using self-service bookings, if you're using bookings in sort of a manual way that is not allowing people to self uh, to, to individually select appointments or book appointments uh, the, the term self-service appointment ID here is a little bit of a misnomer because it does, it's just, it hasn't been updated. It, it's, this is the ID for the actual booking itself, uh, no matter how it is booked, whether it's done through self-service or through you assigning that booking. Uh, but the point is that this is the identifier that we want to use or want to record in that list so that later on we'll be able to I positively identify that entry. So <clears throat> I'm going to go in, well actually I've already done this in this list, I simply added that column, self-service appointment ID, and populated it. 
So now if I want to build that uh, that second flow where if a, if a booking is updated. So I want to change the status here. Now when I created the status field, I think I just created it with booked and canceled. So I want to add another one here, which is updated. Just to kind of flag those that were, you know, where the appointment was created and then maybe changed from its original. So it's still booked, but it, it's been updated, but it hasn't been canceled. So I'll hit save. And in our flow here, so we've got this stump of a flow with one of booking is updated. So I'll just edit this. Now, not knowing what was updated here, we're going to need to basically rewrite over those uh, fields that might have changed. So the date, the time, the start date, and end date, etc. Um, so basically, we've got our composed body here. Now, in order to get that particular item from the list, we don't have what we need. What we would normally use is the get item action in SharePoint, which gets a singular item, but it, that requires the item ID, and we don't have that. So what we need to do first is use a get items, filter it to match that service self-service appointment ID, and then get the ID of that, then get that item. So this is a common pattern in, in Power Automate where you kind of need to do three or four steps instead of just one step because you need to get the data that you need as inputs for those subsequent steps. So I'm going to add an action here, which will be a get items action. And I'm just going to rename this to get booking by self-service ID. Oh, not sure what happened there. Self-service ID. Okay. Uh, and then the site address will be our help desk. List name is bookings tracker. And then in our filter query here, we're going to uh, go over to our list and see what we name this column. And if you want to find out what the internal column of a name is, uh, kind of the quickest way to do that is to simply filter that column. And then if you look in the URL, you'll see the field is the field name or the internal field name is going to be there. It'll be, it'll say field filter field, and then that will be the internal name. So let me copy that because that's what we need to do to filter this. So I'll paste that in there. So self-service appointment ID equal to parenthesis. Uh, and then I need to get that self-service appointment ID out of the trigger. So and then surround that with single quotes, hit save. So that's going to return me an array of, uh, it'll be an array of only one item because there should only be one entry which has that self-service appointment ID. Um, there could be more than one, but we're going to assume that there is only one. So I need to get the, now basically look at the output of this get items action, which is an array of one item to get the ID number for that list item. And I'm going to use the, another compose action to do that. So let me just type in compose. And we'll call this compose booking tracker ID. And this will be, I'm going to use the first expression. So we'll go to first and then I go back to the dynamic content and I need to select value. So basically we're going the first value out of that, uh, this get items action. And then at the very end, I need to put a question mark, square bracket, single quote ID. Uh, so that's basically going to give me back the item ID of that item. So if I click OK, and we have the benefit now of having an item that was or a booking that was updated. So we can simply save this and test it by rerunning the previous event. And what that should return to us is we have 
our array of single items. So there's one item there. And the booking ID is 13. So we know that is item number 13. Uh, so what I can do next is edit this. Now, and you don't strictly need to do this get item. Uh, I like to just to be sure that I absolutely positively have the correct thing. So I'll say get item and help desk bookings tracker and then we'll use that compose the output of that booking tracker ID compose there we go and then I also want to add an update item action and this is again going to be for the same site help desk bookings tracker and booking tracker ID. Now the, the title here is helpful because now instead of kind of iterating through and getting the first title from this output, I can just get it from this get item. So that's why I like to do that as, as just a uh, time saver for any required fields. Now, if it's not a required field, you don't need to fill it in, but any that are required, you do need to populate them with something. So I'm going to populate that with the title there. And then again, since I don't know what's changed, uh, I'm going to populate it with whatever body came in or whatever information came in in that body. So we'll go with customer email, but we want the customer email from the trigger, uh, the service name, and again, now we have the service name from the get item, but that's what it was before. If, it, if that changed, if they change the service, then you'll want to get, be sure to get that from the trigger. So the when an appointment is updated. So we'll get that service name. Um, this one, I'm keeping this simple. This particular service doesn't have questions and answers, so I'm not worried about that now, but I would absolutely want to to adjust that as well if if, I was, you know, if I have services that use those um, questions and answers, but I definitely want to update the start and end time just to be sure, because that's most likely what would have happened or what would have changed. They would have rescheduled the appointment. So they would have changed the start time and possibly end time. And that's that. And then I'm going to change the booking status value to updated. And anything else I can leave alone. I don't need that booking ID. I don't need the self-service because that's going to be the same. We're going to just basically leave those values alone. Hit save. And then if I test this, now just to, to clarify, if I go into that booking, we'll see that there is a disparity because even though it was it was booked for the 19th at 10 a.m. if we look in our tracker it still says 9 a.m. because we didn't update that value so now when I rerun this we will see that that updates that item and if we refresh our tracker list here now we've got the correct start and end time so that's pretty much it that's again the simplified version um, likewise if you want to create a flow for when the when the booking is canceled uh, you would essentially do the same steps just change the the status or the booking status here to canceled and since i don't need this booking id column anymore uh, i'm simply going to edit that and delete it Again, I thought that was what we were going to need, but apparently not. It's actually the self-service ID uh, that you need to, to keep in this list. So again, add in whatever other columns you want to track. It probably would be a good, a good idea to also include columns for uh, the staff that's assigned, etc., in order to ensure that you've got the information you need in one shot and in, in one glance. So hopefully this was helpful to you. Um, and 
If you have any questions, throw those in the comments down below, and have a great day.